I mentioned earlier in the show uh, some of this research I was doing um, in, pertaining to the Alumbrados Society and uh, how this was the origins of the Illuminati. I'd like to read something for you here now. Uh, the historian Marcelino Menendez Paleo found the same name, Alumbrados, as early as 1492 and traced the group to a Gnostic origin. These were the illumined ones. Menendez thought their views were promoted in Spain through influences from Italy. One of their earliest leaders, born in Salamanca, was a laborer's daughter known as La Beta de Paradita. She came to the notice of the Inquisition in 1511 by claiming to hold colloquies with Jesus and the Virgin Mary. Some high patronage saved her from a rigorous denunciation, and Ignatius... Uh, Ignatius of Loyola was, while studying at Salamanca in 1527, was brought before an ecclesiastical commission on a charge of sympathy with the Alumbrados, but escaped with an admi admonition. Others were not so fortunate. Now, notice how they had these, these people in their custody, but once they found out what they were really doing and who they were working for, they let them go. In 1529, a congregation of naive adherents at Toledo was subjected to whippings and imprisonment. Greater rigors followed, and for about a century, Alleged connection with the Alambrado sent many to the Inquisition, especially at Cordoba. The Alambrados were officially condemned in an edict of the Grand Inquisition in 1623, yet the light of their shining ones has not ceased to shine. The shining, the, the shining ones is what the Alambrados was. That was the precursor of what eventually became the Illuminati. And so when, when Weishaupt came into the picture in 1776, Weishaupt wasn't, um, you got to understand, at, at, at that time you had, the Vatican had already been around for a long time and they, were, they had done the, you know, they'd been behind uh, the Crusades and they'd been behind all this stuff and, and anybody who had uh, religious beliefs outside of Christianity and the, and the church were, you know, considered heretics and, and blah, blah, blah. But what, what's funny is, is I've seen all these historical examples of every time that the priest class and every time that, that the Holy Roman Empire would go after a specific ideology, they would then absorb that ideology into their power structure and then use it to further their own agenda. That's what they do. And this has been going on for hundreds of years, and that's exactly what we know as the modern-day term Illuminati was. Because they basically persecuted all the people who were out of the Alambrado Society um, who were, you know, was really the, the, the first Illuminati. And then what did they do? Well, they sent Weishaupt uh, in to uh, infiltrate the Masonic Lodges to get the rest of the information. And then once they had all the secret knowledge, because all of this stuff ultimately went back to Solomon's Temple. And then once they had that, Weishaupt was then allowed to set up the quote-unquote Illuminati under the guise of it being a, a Catholic order, because he was a former Jesuit uh, as well. And uh, this is where you had it, it become a part of the continuing control of the power structure of the Vatican and the priest class itself and beyond just something, because probably on, uh, on its own, it may not have become what it was. This may have well have been something that was being started by people to do good things. But these, um, I mean, these are the people who came up with the ideology that the, 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 the Jesuits came up with the ideology that the end justifies the means. And that is the same opera, uh, modus operandi these people use today. The Modern History Project introduction briefly overviews the Alambrados as the Alambrados, enlightened or illuminated ones, was a mysterious movement in Spain during the 16th and 17th centuries that believed that when a person achieved a certain degree of perfection, they experienced a vision of God and then entered into direct communion with the Holy Spirit. At this point, the soul would enter a state of limbo, not advancing or going back. Once this level was achieved, a person didn't have to perform any good works or get involved in any religious activity because they had re received the light. Boy, imagine that. Imagine, imagine, if, if, imagine if that was, uh, if we were all allowed to have that, you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't have to, you, you, you receive the light. And uh, once they received the light, they would possess superior human intelligence. Oh, well, we can't have that getting out to the public, especially if you're running religion, can you? Nope. Wow. 
Gene Discola connects the Los Alumbrados with other with the other Illuminati, but sees both groups as related to mysticism as much as secret societies. Despite their perceived threat to political and ecclesiastical authorities, they included personalities as different from one another as Juan Valdez, Miguel Servet, and Magdalena de, de la Cruz, possibly mad or else an inspired prophetess. It is said that she foretold the Battle of Pavia and the arrest of Francis I. The Holy Office was in a frenzy of zeal to purify the church to guard against the dangers of ever more threats, as imagined. After all, the sudden appearance in the north of Protestantism, as well as humanism, were unprecedented and highly disturbing. In Spain, the old civilization of Moors and of Jews, though beaten, nevertheless seemed capable of resurrection to the paranoid Catholic inquisitors. It must be the work of the devil, the alarmed inquisitors felt. They must be influenced by Jewish Kabbalists or by Muslim Sufis. They are sorcerers and charmers, they said, yet the religious police were relentless. And that's the whole thing is, 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 is these, you know, uh, that's what they've done. They, you know, any, any group they've seen as a threat to their power structure has ultimately has been powerful. That's why they've seen it as a threat. So what do they do? They, well, they kill off all the people that are uh, in charge of these different movements. They take their information absorb it into their power structure, kill everybody involved, and move on, and then use it to further their own agenda. And, and, and that's what's so mind-blowing to me now to find out. And somebody said to me um, one time, that, and I think it was in the chat room or, 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 or in an email, or I can't remember, but somebody said to me one time, you know, Josh, I think that you've probably opened up a bigger can of worms with this CMP thing than you even, even know that you have. And I, and I find that absolutely true because now that I'm finding out these connections with the Jesuit order, the John Burt Society, and how far this stuff, the Jesuit order goes back to the formations of the Illuminati, even prior to the actual Illuminati being founded. I mean, now, and then, and then cross that with the, these people that are involved with, that are in the bloodlines. Uh, it, it's unbelievable. So this is why statements like what Peter Del Scott said in that first interview that I did with him, um, and why I've I've said things like you know nobody's saying nobody's saying these guys are running the world, but what we're saying is they're definitely um, we we you can't trace the CFR's origins back to um, the, the the Illuminati, but you certainly can trace the origins of of people that are involved in the Council for National Policy and the Jesuit Order and the rest of this stuff all the way back to their you know hundreds and hundreds of years in history here, folks. These guys have been running the show for a very long time. Um, and so I hope to, to have more of this information sussed out than I do now and be able to get some of it in the secret volume too, but I wanted to, get a, to give you a little taste.